welcome to a special PCA After Her show. It's a special show with your host, the one and only Daddy Dover Caleb. And with me, as always, producer, man behind the machine, Juicy J. What's up, my guy? Dude, I'm fucking exhausted. I'm beat. Um, I'm just kind of grinding. Um, this is going to be a little special after her. Everybody's going to be able to see this after her. If it's important that we do this PCA, a uh, little recap for obviously both audiences. Um, if you're one of the Patreon members and you're like, oh man, well that sucks. You know, we, we, you know, you know, we, we, we're supposed to get that extra episode. Just remember you guys got 21 exclusive interviews that we did and all the other content we've been just putting out for everybody. Uh, it's just, dude, I've been absolutely grinding for you guys, man. So, you know, if you guys are upset about it, my bad. Juice Master G, what do you got to say, man? How you feeling? I mean, honestly, just good to be home. Like, Vegas takes it out of you. The traveling is what... We had probably the most uh, nerve-wracking plane ride. Jerry, I thought, was going to have a panic attack. Yeah, that plane ride on the way back, fucking... Uh, it was completely fine until it wasn't for the last 40 minutes. I was like, oh, dude, this plane's going down. We're going to die. Yeah, yeah, last 40 minutes going into Chicago. Correct. Before we switched, uh, it got choppy, it got bumpy, it was rainy, it was like we are going through a storm that was not fun and we also had that delay from chicago to vegas that left us like sitting on the runway for a while right Damn. well that was on the way there yeah. but i mean like whatever dude uh it happens it is what Man. it is i slept the entire time it's like it didn't even happen yeah we woke up we're like oh we haven't taken off yet what the yeah hell? that's exactly what happened but uh no i remember specifically i'm like talking to you, i'm like oh this isn't that bad and you're like really then, like, we had, like, a really, like, violent shake. I was like, all right, that one was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, at a point on the way home, I thought we were falling out of the air. I was like, this is not good, fellas. This is not good. Uh, this is real bad. Our hit- flight to Buffalo was supposed to have Wi-Fi. I think they just said, fuck that. We're not turning it on. I also think they were mad at me. Yeah. Jerry pissed the fucking flight attendant off, who was, like, a middle school bus driver. <laughs> he kind of reminded me of, like, a Dr. Phil. A little bit, yeah. Well, it didn't help that your water bottle like rolled all the way to the back of the plane too. As soon as we took off, I don't even think that that was the issue. I don't even think that they uh, cared other, about that. Other than that, you're a pretty nice guy. I don't know what he had against you. I don't know. I think uh, I think I was just trying to be funny, and he wasn't he wasn't being receptive of my great sense of humor. He wasn't having it. Whatever, dude. I'm over it. Good to be back. Still a little jet lagged. Still trying to get used to the time change. It's amazing how fucking fast your body just can like forget what time zone that you're from yeah well uh like you said we, you've been grinding we we've been grinding this whole trip it wasn't just all fun guys like believe it or not just walking to all these booths back and forth and just hammering out interviews it definitely took a lot out of us man we were like by the end of day one it my nuts hurt to walk <laughs> i was chafing so bad like the chafe was unreal i almost didn't want to go out uh Sunday, dude, we were grinding out these interviews. I didn't realize that we had that much scheduled on Sunday. I thought Sunday was our lighter day. We grinded out so many interviews. We didn't. We did not eat a lunch at all. We just went straight through, just hammering these episodes. Out. I looked down at the clock. It was like five thirty. We had a half hour left, and I'm like, the fuck? We didn't happened? eat. No, we didn't eat mm-hmm. today. What the fuck? I had. I had a. I ran. My body was fueled by one Cliff Bar and a Monster Energy and a probably six or seven shots of Blackened and Uncle Nearest. Yeah, we were going through the Uncle Nearest. Oh, dude, that single barrel that they hit us with. That was nice. That single barrel Uncle Nearest, that was great. The Blackened, as always, such a, it's a good staple mark whiskey to have. Uh, the Drew Estate booth was hooking us up with that one. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun, though. Uh, obviously, ugh, dude, I'm still exhausted, man. I'm still tired, but whatever, man. A lot of good things came from the trip. A lot of good relationships were made. Uh a lot of good content for you, Patreon listeners. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> obviously, everybody's going to be able to hear this after her. If this is kind of just like an exclusive special because we're gonna we have have a few things we need to address. But uh, yeah, I mean, dude, go check out those interviews, man, on the Patreon. It's uh, www.patreon.com backslash Down to Herve Podcast. There is probably three or four new interviews that we did from PCA being uploaded daily, probably till they're done. I think there's still probably about 10 or 11 left, but uh, yeah, make sure you guys are going to check out that content. Caleb is absolutely cringe as fuck during most of them. Uh, I think that you guys will 
absolutely yeah. enjoy. If you've seen any of the mini clips we put out, <laughs> just know that he was like this basically the entire trip and for every single person in the industry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, some people were just like, what? And then some people were like, that's the first time in 30 years I've ever been asked that question. I mean, there's a lot of shit that Caleb was doing that was like, <laughs> people were taken back by you. They were confused by you. They were insulted by you. They, your presence bothered people. It was kind of amazing. But then it was also nice to be appreciated throughout that, too. Yeah, uh, I, I think the Matt Booth interview was probably the highlight. Mm. Uh, you know what? I left the, like Juan Lugo from Don Dorteo. Don Dorteo, I left him stunned a little bit. He hit me with the pause and the gay. He like treated me like you guys treat me. So like he fit right in. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. feel like uh, obviously like Juan Lugo is one of them guys that you know that that's one of the boys like that yeah. that dude him Masil like yeah, them I got dudes that vibe. them dudes are they're 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 the boys man yeah. like those are guys you look forward to um, and they're he he's like our age too and like gets our similar sense of humor yeah I I K- Caleb like we're not gonna spoil everything but Caleb tried to throw a curveball question he's like you thought that was the curveball and he answered it like right away <laughs> yeah well I didn't want him to disappoint his parents or grandparents out there that you know were founded and started the company that he works for. So I didn't want them to catch wind of that if they're still out there and be like, nah, this is what you're doing to our company? No, nah, that's This a, is what you're doing, interviewing with these guys? I'm going to say that's a dude who does not give a fuck and is unapologetically who he is. That's why I like the guy. Like That's us, though. Yeah, that's the I thing. mean, I've, I feel like the feedback we've gotten from the interviews have been pretty good. So, uh, that being said, obviously, we're going to touch more on like PCA. There's a lot of things we got to get to. But first things first, we're actually going to do a little cigar review. This is a cigar that I did smoke. If you're a Patreon member, I did a mini review on this cigar. But I'll let Gio take this away. This is usually where he comes in anyway. All right, guys. So this cigar that we are doing for this post-PCA special after her, whatever we're going to call this. We haven't figured that exact title out. But it's going to be the Ernesto Perez Carrillo Encore Black. Nice little special release. Uh, this is going to be a Connecticut Broadleaf Maduro wrapper, San Andreas binder, and it's going to be Nicaraguan filler from Candega, Esteli, and Jalapa. Uh, the goal for this one was to be medium to full-bodied. So this is a variation of the original Encore, which was a uh, Cigar of the Year with a... Uh, what year was it, Jer? The Encore? Yeah. Th- oh, that was the blue one, right? 20... I'm not going to even guess. I know it's not 19, 20, 21, 22. I know it's not 18. That was the uh, Eye of the Shark. Uh, Could have been 2017? Maybe? 16? Yeah. I'll do some research. One of them. It was just, it, it's obviously. I'm going to say 16. I'm going to guess. I'll look it up. Because the 2015, I think, was the La Bijou 1922 by yeah. My Father Cigars. Yeah. Uh, but. Obviously, with this being a kind of uh, spin on a very, very highly acclaimed blend, uh, EPC wanted to make this a little bit stronger for you know the people that like a heavier smoke. So that was what was going on with that. Uh, these are a box press Toro. They are five and three eighths by fifty two ring gauge, and I am currently watching my homie, the one, the only Val Kilmer, straight out of <laughs> Tombstone. This is going to be gone by the next episode, but I, I figured I'd uh, I'd share this with all you guys. This the, the, beautiful twisted mustache I've achieved over the last two months. Doc Holiday in the house. You just like completely going to shave it off, like completely? Or just, no, like, trim it, I'm going to tr- I'm going to trim it so it looks normal. I just been growing this because Gio and a couple dudes from work said it would be funny if I did it okay. again. I, I bring it back every now and then. Oh, I got a question about that cigar of the year. Now it says 2018 number one cigar of the year was the EPC. Encore? Encore Majestic. Is that any... That's a size. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, yes, yeah, so it was 2018. Okay. I was wrong. What uh, so, these were made in 5,000 boxes of 10 with an MSRP of $17. Doing some math, box cost you 170 bucks. They've only put out about 2,000 of the boxes. So, in the latter half of the year, you'll probably see a re-up of these. Uh, so, be on the lookout. It is a rare. I think they're going to start making these an annual release from my understanding. So not a true one-off like the uh, previous EPC Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, make sure you're checking this out, guys. This is a really, really, you know, good release. And, you know, EPC puts out some really, really fine products. So if you can get your hands on them, check it out, man. Caleb, you want to toss me that later, though, real quick? 
<laughs> got a little long in the tooth there. No doubt. I think that um, we need to start collecting donations for Geo to get a lighter. <laughs> uh, we we you know we've been like in the media, we've been in the industry for two years. Um, he still doesn't have a fucking lighter. No, I had one. It Don't just, we have a box of those? It like... sucked from day one. Uh, r- right from Jump Street, it sucked. Oh, yeah, the Rocky Patel yeah. lighters? Yeah, dude, yeah, that thing was absolutely... Don't we have a box of lighters just like that? It's just, just no, there was just something wrong with it. It's not that it sucked. It was just there was something yeah. wrong with it. And then he never got it fixed. It was cool looking. It was a very cool looking lighter. It just the fucking thing didn't work. There was something wrong with it. It had a defect or something. I don't know. Get a goddamn lighter. Yeah, Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Bring, bring it to the man himself. Holy shit. If we ever see Look Rocky. Look at how like, stressed I am right now, man. I need like a good massage. Oh, I thought you were going to say you needed a good drink. I was be like, hey, if you want something, I'll reach and grab it for you. But massage, but, that's out of my... Yeah, it's not here. Of, I thought you were going to say you needed a Zandy because that was my fa- one of my favorite jokes of the uh, trip. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Who needs Zandy? Because, uh, yeah. If, Listen, any, if anyone needs them. No. There's no Zandies. But... Whatever. It is what it is. What are we doing? What, what are we getting into <coughs> we, here, buddy? Do you still want to recap PCA a little bit more, or should we get into the first story and mix in a little PCA recap in between stuff? Oh, I'm down for whatever you want to do, bro. I'm down for whatever, man. Because we're down to her. Because we're, yeah, we're down to her. We're down to her. Why don't we continue her. the PCA train a little bit? Okay. So I think this is a very big one here. Caleb, this was your first PCA, first time in Vegas. I mean, how was it, man? Like, overall, like, your actual experience, like... <laughs> all right vegas well first of all just going to pca day one the sheer size of this place at the convention center like it was <laughs> very overwhelming because like you walk from the front end to the back end i couldn't tell you how many booths were there there was places i'm seeing like all these posts on instagram that we didn't even get to check out a because we didn't have enough time or b because like we were walking and we had our path set on certain people that we had appointments for there were so many booths we missed out on. I was like, damn, I wish we could have went there, hit that up, or revisited. And I'm just like, I didn't even know these people were there. So a bit overwhelming. But like the whole overall experience, it's like you're walking to a huge furniture store. And like it's like a warehouse of that. But everyone is smoking. And you are smoking too. And then the whole room, like after you're there for the first half hour, the smoke is like floor to ceiling. It's like, it's pretty amazing to see that. Definitely have a little bit of like red sore eyes. Uh, to go along with the bags and no sleep that I got during the first, like, 72 hours, uh, Thursday through, like, Saturday. Um, definitely overwhelming. But day two, all the nerves and the jitters got out. I was, a lot, I was really nervous day one on the floor. Like, in the interview, shaking, looking around. Very nervous day one. But then I was like, you know what? Day one's over with. Day two is going to be better. The way I look at the show now... Um I feel like the first PCA, you are like that. You're like, oh, man, I don't really want to talk to that guy. That guy's huge in the industry. And now I'm like, me and Gio kind of came up with this like analogy. Like him and I, we literally like chase around like awful fucking people. Like we like, chase like bad criminals. Like, like yeah. so why can't I walk up to the guy who's going to just, hey, man, here's my new cigar because <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm too big. It's like. I don't even know how that makes sense, but it's like, how did I get from there to here? So, so speaking of that, you had your nerves about uh, meeting Pete, huh? A little bit. It's not. It's, it's not about story. meeting Pete. I'm, I've met Pete Johnson a yeah, couple times. You've got pictures with him. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. There's just, I don't know. The only thing I gotta say that is still awkward about it is because like you're there with a media purpose, and if you don't have an appointment with these people, you just simply can't make appointments with everyone. It is finding that right moment when they're not talking to someone. Because as media, I feel like they're all these people are there also to make money. And the last thing I would want to do is interrupt someone when they're like writing an order or trying to close a deal. Because that to me is just a little disrespectful. But I think we've done a good job of respecting people's time where, you know, nobody seemed to be annoyed by us or too busy. Yeah. But there were a few. <laughs> yeah. The same few. Yeah. And we made our uh, we made our selected times to go talk to John Huber to go talk to Steve Saka. So and we fit those in nicely. Where we had a good half hour with John, just us three, you know, and that was great. That was just like talking with uh, one of your friends' dads. You know, we didn't do like a media interview with John Huber, but I will say one thing: it was just nice. That was honestly like one of the better parts of the show for me, just to sit down, relax, sit around a table. And just fucking talk. And it was the same thing with like Steve Saka. Like we just yeah. sat down, had a drink, 
smoked a fucking cigar, and then immediately had to rush out because we had another fucking appointment. It's just like <laughs> appointment after appointment after appointment. It's just like, holy shit. But luckily yeah. with, with Steve, it worked out because he had an appointment at the same time. So it wasn't like, a, like yeah, hey, yeah, Steve, yeah. we got to go. But yeah, he let us grab in his stash, grab whatever we wanted. Uh, he brought out a single barrel of like old Fitzgerald that we had, which no, is very it was nice. No, old it was uh, it was old Forester oh, single old Forester, barrel. That's what it was. Yeah, if he had gave us old Fitz, <laughs> yeah, that Jer- would have been. Jerry'd been like, "Fuck this appointment, I'm drinking that." <laughs> uh, we had a very nice gambling talk with Steve. So like, dude, it was awesome just to sit down with a guy who sponsors the show and not do like any show related talk. Just enjoy the time that we had uh, in his presence. Same with John. That was it. Was yeah. just like talking to one of your friends' dads and just hanging out. Yeah. yeah. John John is definitely one of my favorite people in this industry that I've encountered. Just a good dude overall. You know, Sokka, it's weird that, like, uh, you know, some people find him a little abrasive, but he's always been, you know, super cool with us, and, you know, we shoot the shit with him, and, you know, he's like, yeah, here, there's my humidor. Take what you want. There's a second level, too. And you're just fine in there, and you're like, of course, naturally going to go full scumbag. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> Absolute dirtbag. I just want one of each, whatever he had. The new uh, size of the Sin Compromiso. There's like 20 different the cigars. Wagash. <laughs> I just want, no, I just want one size of each. <laughs> All right. The new Sin Compromiso, the Wagashi. I didn't take like a Red Meat Lovers or anything like that, so. Now. You know. All right. Caleb, now, the first interview we did of the entire show was with Sebastian, and that's a guy that, you know, you've, you've, you've put us onto that brand. Yeah. Like. One hundred percent. That's I, I can say that for sure. I got one here with me too, <laughs> even though I just ashed all over my laptop. But I, I brought one because I was like, I, I, it's a Corona size. I, like I want to smoke this. It's awesome. All right. Yeah. So, how was that? You know, finally getting to sit down with the guy. Like me and Jerry have met him now twice, and like he's just a good dude. I like his buddies, uh, Jack, and I can't remember the other guy's name. There was the, George, and then that might uh, be I think Brian was the other guy with the gray yeah. beard. Mm-hmm. But they were all super cool to us. Ah, I liked it. We got to like preview the tempora, the new size, and that like uh the pig, like the pig size, almost like that. Like uh, it had the PCA like white band on it, but when you still took that off, it still had the the gold st- the gold diamond there. Um, way bigger than I thought in person. Like I knew he was like a bigger guy, but like he was he was really a tall guy. I did not expect how big he was, but it was awesome. still. <laughs> it was still nice to just go and have a conversation face to face, and that that's a guy who like. What do you mean by that? I thought I'd never meet. He's from Switzerland. You know, maybe, you know, you don't know when you're going to see these guys. So I was like, well, it's awesome meeting a guy whose cigars you really enjoy. For sure. For sure. Uh, I don't know. There were a lot of great highlights, man. But uh, I'm just, I'm happy it's over. Yeah. Um, I'm happy that this year it's over. Now I have a year before I got to worry about it. I got a question for you guys. I, I, I don't think we talked about it, and I wanted to ask you guys. Out of all like the new booths or the new people that we talked to that we interviewed and got to meet, what was one of you guys' favorites? Because we did a couple new ones. So my favorite isn't someone that like this isn't that wasn't the first time I met him, but that was the first time I think we got to have an extended conversation. Howard G, hands down. Yeah, he would make my list for sure. Yeah, I liked uh, uh, Gus and Billy from Artisano. Them guys are fucking cool as hell, man. <laughs> they, I thought they were twins too. It was hard to tell those two guys. I apart. remember at one point I was talking to like one of their reps, and then I turned the around. General. Yeah, and I was just like, "Yo, man, uh, thanks, Billy." He's like, "No, it's Gus." I'm like, "What the fuck? When the hell did <laughs> yeah, you guys switch?" I remember. I don't that. even remember you guys switching. <laughs> they switched mid interview, yeah, so it like played a trick on you guys. Yeah, yeah. So like, I was turned around. I was talking to uh, another dude in their booth about some shit, and then, uh, yeah, man, we were talking, you know, about the job and shit. He was in the military, and he was involved in law enforcement. So you know, it was cool to shoot the shit. That is another thing. You realize how many dudes in law enforcement or ex-military there are that are yeah. just running around selling cigars and, or involved in the cigar industry in some shape or form? Yeah, that's a, that's definitely a funny part of that. I, I love, uh, yeah, that, during that interview with the uh, Artisano guys, the guy started giving me some, like, you know, lip. I'm like, oh, God, I know you're in some capacity on the job. I was like, hold on, we'll get back to this as soon as I'm done recording. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't. I didn't even remember that. What did he say? Oh, it was giving me shit. Like you, you made your normal. Oh, he's on steroids. Joke. Like within every, you know, three <laughs> seconds of meeting anybody, and he's like, "Yeah, how's that back look?" And I was like, "We're gonna get back to that in a second, but my back looks great." Yeah, Joe was Joe was still recording. I even heard that. He was like, actually, the yes, I did. Uh, I did actually hear that. Now that you mention it, I did hear that. Yeah, the general, yeah. that guy, the real big dude. Yeah, he had yeah. That. He was awesome. I think his, was his name Joe or something. I don't know. I have his card. I, I. Uh, I also have like a giant stack of cards, like 
<laughs> yeah. I knew people that I first got to experience. Uh, I really loved meeting the Hooten Young guys. Mm-hmm. Like Matt Fernandez, who hooked that up. Dude, the kid was with that company for two weeks, a fan of the show. And he was like, I've only been here for two weeks. Yet, he's in Vegas at PCA. And just... I scheduled your interview. Exactly. Because I wanted to make sure that you <laughs> they talked to you. And yeah. they, they hooked us up with like good cigars, uh, great conversation, and like the whiskey that they have there was amazing too. Like, dude, they the whiskey and cigars, I'm I'm in. We'll talk all day. Yeah. I, Did you I, notice a theme? Yeah. There's something to drink at every booth for the most part. Yeah. Oh, and uh Eric from uh Black Star was cool too. I Oh I, yeah. That was yeah. at Black Star K- line. Yeah. Uh, Caleb <laughs> I, asked some random guy if it was his dad, and they were like two years apart. Cliff. Uh, well, Cliff seemed way older than <laughs> Eric, so I was like, Eric, is that your dad? Because he's like so homey. He's treating me. He's like, you want me to cut light like this for you? He, well, he was like playing off me. He's like, hey. And then and by the time you left, he was like, get that motherfucker away from my boot. I hate that motherfucker. <laughs> I can't wait. To, like, if we have Eric back on, I'm purposely gonna ask him, like, "Hey, how's your dad, Cliff, doing?" <laughs> yo, you and gotta hit him a- with the, the what they did, the Pedro. Who's your daddy? <laughs> yo, bro, that shit was so funny, bro. The dudes, dude, like, they were dying. Get that motherfucker away from my goddamn booth. Yeah, I gotta say that cigar they gave us though. I didn't get to finish it, but that cigar was very nice. I think it was like the rosewood, perfect size. Like it was like well, a what I. What's 48 nice? ring gauge by six. It was awesome. It was a great smoke. Yeah. So, well, I didn't know that they made out of uh, James Brown's factory. So, yeah. I like the story behind that where James Brown told them he couldn't work out of the factory. Yeah. At first. At first. And then he advertised the brand. He was like, man, you do a good job branding, man. You know what? Actually, I take it back. You can you can <laughs> use my factory whenever you want. So, <laughs> that's actually a pretty cool origin story for, uh, for that company. Well, I, I, like I mean, I, I respect to James. Like, I mean... Obviously, meeting him, you could tell he's a very kind of interesting guy. Like, the way he dresses is not what I expected, but also, like, he's got, like, this punk rock look, but then, like, sneakerhead. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I got, I, how would I phrase it? Like, being able to say, you know what? I like what you're doing. Yeah. Let's do this. Yeah, for sure. Like, definitely means, like, you earn the dude's respect or something like that. I don't know. Not that it matters to earn, per se, but, you know, helped him because uh, that cigar smelled great. I still haven't got to smoke it yet. There's probably the one nice part about this trip is you come back with, like, two big old bags of cigars. There's probably over, like, 100 plus, and even if we smoke one on every show and after her, that's only a hundred and fucking four. Yeah. So. There's a lot of new product for you guys coming out. Honestly, fuck, man. It would be hard to sit here and cover everything we did. It would be almost impossible. Well, another group that I liked that was really awesome was uh, Jake Wyatt. I like talking to Neil Garcia. I got to shoot the shit about baseball. But their cigar is so cool looking. And like that Corona size, dude, it's such an easy smoke. And I even did the Candela. I like that his uh, wife was a Seinfeld fan. I said, you know what? Maybe he would have got out of the AAA if he had George Costanza as his manager. <laughs> she started laughing her ass off, dude. Oh, yeah. You only hit uh, 20 home runs in AAA. Well, only 20. <laughs> it was fucking funny. Yeah, uh, Neil is fucking cool as fuck, man. That guy was yeah. really fucking cool. But I, I appreciated that uh, there was some Seinfeld yeah. love. I love Seinfeld. And the other thing I do have to appreciate is, is like, now, granted, we've been doing this two years now, but the really like nice part about this was actually being able to go there and random people come up to you like, yeah, I really like your podcast. And you're like, the fuck? <laughs> like, we don't think we're these fucking crazy celebrities. So like you hear that, it's just cool. And like know that, you know, obviously Jerry works his ass off to put out the actual video and content for it and his quadruple role in terms of that. And we all have our various roles in it, but. It's always nice when it gets appreciated. Hopefully, uh, Caleb's you know sticker gesture works out in our favor someday. Yeah, that was fun. We don't have to dive too deep into that. But... <laughs> we, if you guys want to, bust that'll, my... that'll be a monthly herf story. <laughs> if you want to bust my balls about it, go ahead. I I, I was just like, I was handing out stickers to yeah. certain people, and uh, <laughs> you know, you hand out a couple stickers to a millionaire, and like, 
<laughs> a millionaire too, because some of those guys are probably definitely millionaires. I was like, oh yeah, he's definitely gonna remember this sticker. Good job, man. I had nothing else to give him, <laughs> just a handshake. Not, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> not a conversation, not a handshake, not a hey, man. You know, it's great to meet you. He just goes right off the rip. You know what though? Here's a sticker. At first, he, I feel like I. I you want like, a lollipop with that? I I feel like at first he didn't want to get up. He just did because of uh, boots and booth. So I feel like, you know, they made the introduction. So, like, just to shake his hand alone was an opportunity just to maybe say, hey, I'm right. with the podcast. But you took that opportunity to say, hey, here's a sticker instead. <laughs> like, again, I'm not going to sit here and uh, critique because I wasn't there and I can't really Monday morning. Yeah, where were you guys? Back. Where were you guys? I was taking a piss. I literally walked over to check out the humidor inside that little shop. And then fucking I come back and he's like, yeah, I gave him a sticker. I was like, <laughs> you did what? Wait, what? Why? And uh, for those who are wondering who the hell we're talking about, man, make sure you guys are checking out that Patreon. Uh, we're we're going to put that on the monthly Yeah, we're going to put that on the on the monthly earth <laughs> for sure. Yeah. I, I just cannot believe this guy. It was also hilarious, though. We're at like an after the event cigar lounge, and it's like us, Matt Booth, Boots, and you know a bunch of who's who people. And that was just really funny. Also, <laughs> Caleb gave him a sticker. <laughs> it's like the doctor's office when you leave when you're a kid. You want the Barbie or the Hot Wheels sticker? Yeah, right. <laughs> the tattoos. <laughs> oh, dude, that shit became a coaster real fast. You guys, you guys laugh, but when you know when he gets home and he unsettles and he's like, "Oh, down to earth, what the fuck is this sticker?" Exactly. That's exactly good. That's what his reaction is going to be. I'm yeah, not gonna scan this shit. This is probably a scam. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I'm not gonna like steal money from anyone. We're not that sophisticated, but you know. No. Yeah. But it's, it's a simple plan. Uh, another random non-PCA highlight of the trip was smoking that uh, Golden Bull. Yeah, our boy Alex from Exile. He hooked us up with the Golden Bull. One of the first batch it runs, too. No, no, the first. Box oh, one. Yeah, box box one. one. Oh. Yep. So we smoked one of the original 15, I think they come in. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Rob Petrie, too, man. That guy's fucking awesome, too, man. You guys are fucking, <laughs> you guys are an absolute fucking riot. Yeah. Dude, I think Rob's yeah, still down there. Right. I think he's still down there. Yeah, right. He did leave. Listen, Rob, I know, I know, you know, you might be still doing your sanitation thing down in Vegas on a uh, business trip, seeing some friends, you know, of yours. But we still appreciate you nonetheless. <laughs> Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. Uh, I appreciated, you know, just that was a fun little sit down because I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, I was in like the like, I sat there and smoked that cigar. And not a lot of people know this, but when I'm really enjoying a cigar, I just sit there and shut the fuck up. Dude, Caleb and Adam ran upstairs on a beer run. I was and almost Gio and I were just sitting around like some slots that weren't being used. Like, yeah, I don't even think we were talking, bro. That th- the most that was said. Like, I got to the point where I was at like, I had maybe like a quarter of it left, and I was like, this cigar is fucking incredible. I almost called it a night. Me and Adam came down to give you guys the Coronas. And I was like, yeah, we'll just call it easy night. And then Alex and Rob just ran up right up on us with their guy Caesar. So uh Do you guys like my uh my bottle opening trick? Yeah, I dude, I tried it with the lighter and the cap. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I sw- I was so I had the lighter in my right hand, holding the bottle hard as hell with my left hand, and for some reason, just like the the twer- the tweak of force, I thought I was gonna throw out my left shoulder. <laughs> I, I I know you did it and you got it to pop. But when I tried it, I, sw- I almost threw out my shoulder. I don't know how it's even physically possible, but my shoulder was like, if I try any more of these, it's going to give out. Oh, man. Bro. It's a sweet trick, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I got one good I'm, pop where it flew and hit the ceiling. You know, so yeah. I got that. I figured it out yeah. after like three tries. Yeah. Uh, it was good to ha- you know get hang with Adam. The first trip, you know, a little run on uh, Fremont. But Caleb got to see all the Vegas street performers and whatnot. Yeah. What did you think of all the freaks, dude? Dude, the, the craziest thing about it was all the kids that were around. I would never <laughs> in a million years bring my kids around that. Like, yes, I get it. You drink around your kids at the house and stuff like that. But on an open street, everyone's got beers, these huge drinks with straws. Uh, you could also smell weed smoke all over. 
And, then and you crack. Go, and then there's yeah, a I'm nun sure. just flapping her titties yep. with, that are taped over the nipple. A lot of weird shit and in Vegas, And that nun man. had a baby in a stroller next to her. There's all these street dancers. They got their dirty kids running that around. That wasn't a street too. dancer. That was a crackhead. <laughs> well, that were, was a crackhead. Well, they were still dancing for money. like to, like to Caleb, that was a crackhead. But I was, can assure you, we're going to just give you a mini overrule here. The only difference is that crackhead's on Fremont Street and not on Broadway. Well, they, yeah, they, they were on Fremont. <laughs> My man's pulling dope. They were on that Friedmont circle, just dancing, and they had all the kids. So that the kids around there was crazy. Um, I thought Al Cortez going in there, dude. That's like old Vegas for me. So that was cool going in Al Cortez. That was that was cool. Yeah, yeah we had a solid night, man. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, way. Well, I think I saved Geo with a with a monster. Dude, I was di- I was getting ready to go to bed. Me and Geo were the ones who voted down staying out later. Yeah, <laughs> and, and yeah, yeah, that monster. I like shotgunned it. And from the walk there, I was ready to be like the vote. I was going with the vote no matter what. But like by the time after that vote, well, you know, of like we're gonna go to this other place, it hits. Suddenly, like I felt that like rush of caffeine and Kyle power. <laughs> Kyle power. <laughs> I was like, let's go. All right, let's go for one drink, and that's it. Then the whole night, it's four in the morning. Yeah. Then I'm sitting around a roulette table with you guys at the end of it. And- yeah. Carl still, still playing. <laughs> Carl fucking. was so miserable the next day. Still fucking. Uh, our boy Carl, Carl from Tall Chief, he got grounded by his dad for showing up at four in the morning. <laughs> yeah, whatever, barely dude. making it to the show. Sorry, Carl, we got you grounded, but you know, behave ne- next time. All right. Uh, obviously, there's a lot to get to, man. We got a couple big stories that we have to hit up today. Yeah, busy, busy weekend that we, you know, we were out at the show, but. A lot of news happened. Now, this isn't cigar news, people. This is like news that happened with, throughout the world that was pretty big. So up first, we're going to do a NY police officer shooting, uh, and it goes hand in hand with the uh, New York soft on crime laws. So uh, fallen officer uh, Jonathan Diller was shot and killed during a traffic stop in Queens. Uh, he leaves behind his wife and one-year-old son who will now grow up without a father. Uh, it happened on Wednesday around 7 p.m. Uh, no, before Wednesday, sorry. The Virgil will happen. The at, Vigil. Vigil will happen this Wednesday at 7 p.m. So, uh, And the people who he was at the traffic shop, traffic stop, had multiple, multiple arrests, even gun charges. So, sometimes these guys were arrested upwards to 15 plus times, even over 20 for the one guy. You know, I actually, uh, I had a lot of people reach out to me about this, especially like show people. And, uh, you know, everybody's just kind of like, you know, hey, they, they get it, you know, just obviously with like Gio and I and like what we do. Like, dude, it's tough, man. You don't, you don't want to, you don't want to see officers, you know, especially in like officer-involved shootings. And like, dude, this is very, very, very tragic. Uh, uh, not things you want to see, man. Especially being in the, in the, you know, the. Yeah, these these always yeah. are terrible. <clears throat> Excuse me. Like, I think of the last time I saw one of these major ones was the Chicago officer. That, yeah, we're uh, fucking Ella Lor- French. Lor- yeah, Ella French and fucking Lori Lightfoot still couldn't even say her fucking name correctly. Yeah. It's fucking well, embarrassing. Well, even that, like, you, the unfortunately, like, these things, you put they put the radio calls out there and you hear that. And, like, a weird thing, like, I don't know if you have this, but this is, like, uh, for whatever reason, if you're in law enforcement, it's like you have to listen to that stuff just to like, and it like, because truthfully, it could be at any given time, either one of us or anyone we know. And it's a really like morbid feeling, like really makes your stomach turn. I don't like that, do it, but I don't know. You just kind of have that car crash effect with it. You know, I, I feel for, uh, I feel for his loved ones, man. Like oh, yeah. young kid, 31 kids, like a kid. They uh, left I'm, behind a one year old. Just. The kids gonna grow up without a dad, you know. It's it's just it's fucking terrible, and and, I mean, and it just all comes back down to these fucking shitty fucking politicians and and how fucking people vote. Oh yeah, well, you know they made a mistake. They should get out. Well, here, okay, that's fine. Is it a little thing? One or two things, okay. No, no, we're not talking about. I'm talking about like yeah, one or two little things, right? If you're committing major crimes like running around to the streets with fucking illegal firearms and like these are people that don't give a fuck. These are people that need to be locked up and the key thrown in the fucking into the, the ocean, ocean, bro. Like, like, dude, what the fuck are we doing? Guys, kids, these I mean, the thing about law enforcement that really sucks is it, it's like the only fucking job that like truthfully, when you go to work, you don't know if you're going to come home. 
It's it, like sure. in firefighters. You yeah. never know who you're going to encounter, what situation, what kind of day they're having, or just what kind of day you're going to have. You know, I don't know. Like, I, I could talk the about draw, right? this shit forever, and I just kind of get angry and frustrated about it because I think that, you know, I hear, well, we might, this might teeter on a political thing here that, I, but fuck it, I don't care. I'm going to say how I feel. Uh, when it comes to that, like, that guy was a good contributing member to society. I don't know the whole mission of the community, uh, what was it, community response team or, like, that particular unit he was in, but it doesn't fucking matter. He decided to go serve his community, whether it was a neighborhood he grew up in or not, he was serving his fucking community and trying to make a positive difference. And you could say whatever fucking nonsense you want about law enforcement or, you know, your opinions of it, but the scumbag that shot him had a... I think 21 plus arrest history. Yep. Yeah. And for various violent felonies, we're not talking some guy that got caught with a bag of weed in 1995 and got sentenced to five years in prison, which is absurd. Right. Like, okay. Bail reform. Good. Address, adjust small drug crimes. Nobody knows to go to jail for five years. Cool. You had a bag of cocaine fucking 15 years ago. You shouldn't still be in jail for it. However, you have gun charges or multiple assault. multiple gun charges, uh, assault charges, crazy fucking assaults, yeah, uh, rapists, fucking uh, okay. like all kinds of shit. Like these dudes, bro, throw away the key. These people are not contributing members to our societies, and they should not be in our societies because shit like this happens. And then fucking a couple fucking police officers got to go off on fucking rants on you know yeah. the awful fucking shit that's happening. And, it sucks, man. You know, touching on New York State, it's fucked up that you will get more in trouble for something like getting a DWI than if you were in possession of like child pornography or shit like that. Because a DUI is a fucking it's a it's a money grab. Exactly, it's, it's a money bullshit, grab. Though. Hey, wow, you fucked up. Hey, guess what? Here, here it is. It's not going to be jail. We're just going to absolutely deplete your bank account and ruin your life yeah, like, temporarily. Like ten grand, right? If, yeah. you're, if, if you're, you're lucky. Yeah, if you're lucky. Let me tell you something. If you did stuff like that for gun charges, you'd probably be more afraid to get arrested. Yeah. Then, then going to jail for what? You go to jail for the night. You get an appearance ticket the next day. If you're lucky, you get an appearance ticket. Then what? Then you know, you obviously, you know, most people, most people don't sit in jail the whole time. What? I don't, what I like that they do is like, I wish, well, it'll never happen in this state. I wish there was more like people being shamed for doing shitty things. Like, I love that video of the sheriff in Florida, like when people are fucking, you know, get caught stealing cars and he's doing it on the, he's doing a Caleb at PCA with the fucking criminal. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hey, hey, how do you like that? Oh, no comment. Okay. So not in St. Lucie County. (laughs) So like the shooter had 20 plus arrest. Um, now, uh, Diller's partner did shoot the guy who shot Diller. Uh, he's in the hospital, stable condition. But it, yeah, it, all it was was a stop for a, a double parking in front of a bus stop. That's all it was. Like, this guy didn't have to do it. So, totally basically, senseless. this was going to be a, hey, man, you, ca- you can't park there, bro. Come on. What are you doing? Yeah. And killed That's, him. Yep. Yeah. Killed him. Shot below his bulletproof vest and was unable to save him. Just the damage is too much. Always a really bad place. Uh, there's yeah. a little area between your pelvis and below your belt. Uh, you get shot there, it's not a good thing. Yeah. It's bad. A lot of organs, a lot of, you know, like your colon, your small intestines. There's a lot of things in there that can go wrong. Even if you live, you know, how much intestines are they going to take? You can get sepsis. It's just a nasty, nasty area. Nasty area. Yeah. yeah. That, fuck that dude. He's a piece of shit. Fuck so, him. So that was the first NYPD Don't officer. even say his fucking name on the show. No, I wouldn't give right. him the time. Don't even fucking say his so name. So that was the first slaying of an officer since 2022 when two officers were... Uh, shot and ambushed in Harlem. Oh, so I remember that one too. Yeah. Fucked up, and yeah, then that two, guy got away for a little while. Two young guys, two young guys that were just chilling. Off, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, ambushed it, in broad in broad daylight. I believe. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. responding to a domestic violence call. So oh, okay, all right. Then we're talking about a different one. No, no, it's it, it was still daylight, but it was a domestic yeah, violence yeah, call yeah, that led yeah. to. But yeah, uh, a very sad story for uh, all you guys in blue over there. Well, I mean, on to the next uh, yeah, man. tragedy just, train here. We're getting yeah, a little we're, dark we're, on the after. Yeah we're, yeah, we're getting a little dark, but these are th- some things that, you know, obviously, yeah. you know, we're humans. We joke around. We fuck around. and But, like, there are some very serious things that need to be talked about. Uh, I, I mean, I could lead us into this one, man. The, uh, this fucking, uh, this shit happening in Baltimore right now with the bridge. I mean, this shit's fucking crazy. Got a little clip for you guys. We'll let it play. All right. 
container ship rammed into a major Baltimore bridge a couple miles from here, causing it to snap and plunge into the channel below. Two people have been rescued so far, and at least six more are missing. Maryland Governor Westmore confirmed that power went out on the ship, which was traveling at eight knots, or roughly nine miles an hour, when it crashed into a pillar of the bridge. Governor Moore also said the ship's mayday call enabled officials to limit traffic on the bridge before it collapsed. Now, this disaster has huge economic impacts for the port of Baltimore, which is a major shipping hub for the East Coast, and will also impact people's daily commutes across the Bay. Yeah, uh, all six of those people that are missing presumed dead, obviously. Uh, with their cars, they fell into the, the, the Bay. What I think is amazing is the two that were recovered were like, they were, well, the one got recovered dead, and then one survived absolutely fine. That's amazing. Yeah, that Drop, dude, he dude fell. went home that night. Yep, so he fell, hit that water, which was 40 degrees. They compare that to a basically falling out of a building and onto, like, concrete. That's fucking unbelievable, man. That's that. the, the whole story is just, uh, dude, tragedy everywhere, man. Tragedy. Yeah. It's fucking horrible, man. Well, if you ever see, like, the full video, that was, like, a news story recap, but it's, like, the power went out on this container ship, uh, it turned back on, and then it, like, veered directions right into like this platform of the bridge so it's like uh, so a lot of people are asking is this a, like a hack is it uh maybe you know when you all your power goes off like on your computer or something like that and it just boots up so fast so it's like maybe the boat was going in one direction the power shut off which is you see the light on and then when the lights turn on it just just auto corrected course so fast that you couldn't yeah. like move it but also like nine miles an hour I don't know the distance, but maybe when the power turned back on, it just extra speed and it just went right through and there's nothing. Here's they the thing. Uh, the nine miles an hour doesn't make it's, you know, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's fucking going five miles an hour. It's just where it hit in the structure. And it's just like a, a very, container ship. It was, it's a fucking. It's like a nuke, man. Thing right, is just like, solid. It would be like you know, if one shipping container fell on your car, it would destroy your car. Right. One. Well, Did the, you see how many were on that thing? Well, the whole boat is almost a thousand feet long. Okay, and it wrecked the whole bridge. Yeah, I would say that. Uh, Jerry, you're probably really good at this stuff. Rough estimate: How many tons do you think that boat weighed? A hundred? You couldn't even fathom it. Because what? A ton's two thousand pounds. They're so. not weighing it. Yeah, it's not weighed. I mean, that doesn't factor in cargo. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, dude. These are just yeah. just the strictly boat alone. containers. Uh, dude, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I think they said like 62 con containers were completely destroyed. It's going to... They make houses out of these things. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can, you can get yeah. like three of them and build a house. Container so. container homes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a bar I went to in, in uh, Austin. It's called Container Bar. Every level of the bar, it's three levels. They're all container. They're all empty container things. Yeah. yeah. And they put air conditioning units in Those there. Those are three. Yeah. That's three. This was a thousand... Oh yeah, and, well, so there's a lot structurally of, that bridge had no chance. Yeah, mm -mm. It and went down if like a pile any person, of uh, I guess. Look, at, I have to just throw it out there, and this might sound a little insensitive to the people that were injured, but thank God it didn't happen during like rush hour because they yeah, there was an estimated like, thirty thousand different people that could be traveling across that bridge. Yeah. Like, yeah. well, it happened at like one in the morning or some shit, one thirty like, or yeah. something. Yeah, like thank. I mean, obviously, I know what you're trying to say, like. Thankfully, it didn't yeah. happen, you know, but like it could have been it, worse. It could have been worse. Yeah, I get you. I know exactly what you're saying. Like seven, seven between seven and nine a.m. The rush hour. When, yeah, exactly. Um, so there's been a lot of rumors. That, like, is this uh, was it a hack? Was it pilot error? Uh, was it maybe because like the people that own the boat were uh, from Singapore? So was it like a Chinese thing? Pilot error? Could it? Been, was it the Russians in a hack? And there were rumors of like uh, a Ukrainian captain on the boat steering it. So Something to do with the whole Ukrainian Russian war. Uh, also, a lot of things about DEI were brought up, like were the wrong people hired for this job that maybe were not qualified enough. Well, not quite an uh, an answer yet because obviously investigation yeah. hasn't been done. But uh, actually, Democrats in Congress turned down an investigation. They said, "Oh, the mayor and the police chief already said we know what caused it. No need to investigate." So right now, there's kind of very no investigation going on. They kind of just they it got voted down in Congress. They're kind of just saying, eh, whatever Baltimore police chief says is that's what happened. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The, Baltimore is a city, like, we've all seen the show The Wire. We know, like, it's a fucking very, very uh, 
dirty politics city. Well, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the writers or creators of The Wire, he said anyone questioning this is an imbecile and is a reject and they're not smart. So anyone who wanted this investigation in Congress, he said, you people are all stupid. You should just trust what the police chief of Baltimore says. He's like, there should be no investigation, whatever. He, like he, he went out there on a tweet. Huh. He was calling out Republicans and all. He was even calling out city officials in Boston who wanted to like just see, in hey, Baltimore? what? Ha-? Yeah, in Bal- he was just saying like even just normal people who are saying, hey, what happened here? He was like, nah, all you people are dumb. You shouldn't question it. He's like, just what they say goes. And he, and like I feel like that's kind of crazy to say, especially if you're from I mean, Baltimore. That's considered as he did a whole season about how corrupt the Port Authority is. <laughs> yeah, that was season two. Yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, that's it's all weird. Frank Sabatka's fault. Mm. <laughs> the Polish mafia of Baltimore shipping containers. <laughs> That guy, he was Pol- They were Polish. Yeah, I know. Uh, and then it was I've the, seen the wire, buddy. Was it the Greek? The was the other dude. I don't the, remember, the, remember the, the the gambling guy? No. Uh, they call him the Greek. He was the like the big drug seal mule in the wire, but he had like that weird voice. Like he was that bad guy in so many movies. He's like got that like stereotypical bald spot in the middle of his head. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, they could be talking about drug dealers around here too. <sighs> All right, another like weird and sad news that happened over the weekend. Uh, two properties by uh, Sean Diddy Combs in Los Angeles and Miami were raided by federal Homeland Security investigation agents uh, as an ongoing sex trafficking investigation led by uh, federal authorities in New York and obviously nationwide, too. So, uh, yeah, lots of crazy videos that came out of there. We like to call Diddy the diddler now. <laughs> the, the real question is, did he do it or did he not do it? I personally think he did it. I, dude, it, it's funny. You look back at old hip hop interviews, like there's ones with Lil Wayne, and Lil Wayne's like, "Don't mess around with those Diddy boppers, the guys who get on stage." And he and like Wayne, Lil Wayne said that to Diddy's face. He's like, "I ain't messing around with these Diddy boppers." He's like, "I'm out here trying to be famous." He's like, "I'll do it on my own. I don't need people like you." Uh, Fifty Cent's been talking about Diddy for a long time. Uh, this may be, maybe we'll finally get answers on the Biggie Tupac desk because uh. We talked about it on After Her as a conspiracy theory. Was Combs involved with certain people involved in their deaths? So maybe, maybe we'll, get we'll never get answers. His uh, plane left, I think, L.A. and is now in Bermuda for some he reason. Posted a like official response like earlier or something from like. Bermuda. I don't know where he was. It ain't in the states. No, I'll um, tell you that. What you said they they tracked his private jet going yeah. from Los Angeles to Cape Verde. So it's somewhere in the Caribbean, and it is around Jeffrey Epstein's island. It's somewhere over there, and it has no extradition laws. But then reports say that I heard two contradicting reports. One say he was off the jet in Cape Verde, but he couldn't leave the airport. He was stuck up at Homeland Security. And then another one said he wasn't even there when he got off the plane. So he hasn't been seen technically yet, but the, at, the, at the raids, I think his sons actually got cuffed as being like, on the property so i think his son's like uh, yeah. there and they did get cuffed so probably taken in for questioning i wouldn't doubt that yeah i don't know these are like just m- fucking powerful people that are moguls in the industry and like i mean if you read the shit that he was accused of doing like in his lawsuit so cassie the singer uh alleged he did some terrible shit like some of the stuff in the context of that was like on par with like the crazy shit vince mcmahon was saying yeah like like some super fucked up shit like weird but like vince has just went away though i haven't heard a peep since that all came out he got erased from wwe and that was it (laughs) he's off wwe is that what happened bro i didn't i I never really followed up they kicked him off the board and i guess like they like he like sold his shares some crazy shit but then now that then they're like hey vince is gone but we brought the rock back (laughs) The old bait and switch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know, man. Like he he would post some really weird videos that like at the time we didn't really question it, but like the, all like the shit with Justin Bieber and Usher. That too, yeah. Like do I it would I put it past like him just being like a Harvey Weinstein esque figure? That's what they're no, saying. No. Like him and Harvey Weinstein, Jeffrey Epstein type figure of the hip hop world. That's what I'm saying. But I don't know. Like this is like, did he, we have to remember that these are people that came up originally through like a lot of people that started in the hip hop industry, especially in like the nineties when gangster rap was at a peak. 
these were gangsters. Like they really had ties back then. Like, right. To get a studio, you had to have some sort of money, and if you had money in those types of neighborhoods, sometimes you're involved in the drug game. Well, like and you funneled, you you started your record company, your record label. You got a studio built. Yeah, like Jay Z openly raps about he was a drug dealer. Like and like, also like there was like a lot of shit saying like Jay Z's the next one to get exposed. I saw on there. Like, been, that's what Fifty Cent said. He put yeah. out he put out on his Instagram like a milk carton and it said missing. Where's Jay Z? Yo, I, that, 50's the funniest. Fifty Cent in the pot. <laughs> 50 Cent is the most grade A troll in the hip hop industry by far. He put a picture of like Jay Z, like how he's got this crazy hair. And then, like, apparently, there's this like uh, gay dude who's a, a black dude who's a painter. Oh, Bos- has, Basquiat. Whatever the fuck yeah, his name Basquiat. is. And he has the same hairstyle as Jay Z. He's like, yeah, that's why Jay Z's trying to look like this fucking guy. Like, just pointed it out. And I was like, yo. Just out there being a menace to society. Well, we appreciate Fifty for that. And Den of all, thieves. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's a man who knows he never did anything too crazy. Because like he's stirring the pot with all these dudes that are like allegedly doing all this crazy fucking shit, and he's just like he's really letting it be known. Like, dude, first dude, off, it's funny. How much does it show how unafraid he is? Because yeah. like he is the only motherfucker saying, "Yeah, I fucking hated that motherfucker. Fuck him." Yeah. Uh, what about all that stuff with uh, Meek Mill? You guys been seeing that? The Meek Mill P. Diddy stuff? Like, there's a lot of, like, oh, gay bro. rumors and stuff going on with those two guys. There, all because yeah. of this, too. So, <laughs> it's not the first time I heard that Meek Mill was gay. The fucked up thing about all this is, so, I have a buddy of mine that's a big, like, Philadelphia fan. And, you know, like, you know how they had, like, Meek Mill was from Philly. They had all, like, the, the his music playing during their Super Bowl run. And someone made an AI clip of uh, Diddy and Meek Mill's uh, sexual intercourse caught on tape in terms of the audio. And it, first off, like, we all know what P-, P. Diddy sounds like. He has a distinct voice. I sent that to him. He's like, I don't think I can ever listen to Meek Mill again. I know it's not real, but <laughs> it was so fucked up. Oh, yeah. There's been an Instagram video. I, don't, I forgot who the rapper is, but he was like, at these parties, I would go. He's like, uh, Diddy would go and they put... They put uh, pills and everyone's drink so people get loose they get wild with it a lot of sex a lot of stuff going on and the guy's like i never drink he's like i don't drink he's like i just smoke weed he's like and i brought my own weed and he's like i would see people doing all sorts of crazy sex acts out in the lobby out in public living room dining room and he was the guy who had the recorded audio and he was like i put it up to the the door and recorded them two going at it i forgot his name he is a rapper i don't know how big he is or yeah. how big he was but i that's the audio clip that you were talking okay. about Oh, then, so I thought it was an AI generator one. That's fucked up. I, All this saying is this makes Cat Williams look way less crazy when he put out that crazy rant on Shannon Sharp's podcast the other day. Yeah. Yo, th- I didn't I didn't catch that. Oh, so this was like a few weeks back. He just went out there and called everyone that like got famous in Hollywood a bunch of homosexuals and that they, they said they all suck dick and have to act like women to get their power. Like he like he goes, "Look at Kevin Hart had to dress like a woman." All this shit, and he like he went down on all the like famous comedians. He's like, he went hard on Usher actually. Uh, with Kevin the, Hart got it with, with the Super Bowl though. Yeah, remember he's like, see what I'm saying? Yeah. Cat Williams, like, he goes, he goes. Harvey Weinstein offered me movies, and in front of five people, offered to suck my penis. He, <laughs> he goes, I didn't get those movie roles, but the other guy who was with me did. I'll let y'all talk on that. <laughs> yeah, it's fucked up, man. Allegedly. Jeez. Uh, allegedly yeah hollywood i don't know what's going on with the hollywood music industry but maybe we'll finally get some unanswered questions to some conspiracies out there in the wild i don't know man i think like the joking statement of like for a billion i think someone's prices are a lot lower that's true (laughs) yeah we'll see fuck all right hey hey jer er, you get to be in 20 movies and your net worth will be about half a billion dollars no mm, i don't know man I, dude if you're... you always everybody always jokingly is like yeah fuck yeah and then you're like so, suddenly that old man cock and balls is in your face so i heard i heard i heard a quote and it's like if the if the price for you to sell out or something isn't your life then you're not really into it like so if you're not willing to give your life for something then you're not really into it. So a lot of these guys taking the money to maybe do those sorts of things, if they're not into it. Because if you were into it, you wouldn't have to do that. You would work your balls off. You'd hustle. You'd grind. Because if, if you're not willing to give up your life for something, then you ain't into it 100%, 110%, you know? So I, I like that quote. I forgot who said it. I can't contribute it. I like it. And 
I, I think it's I think it holds true. If you're not gonna be into something a hundred ten percent, and you, the price isn't your life, and if you're gonna do some stuff like that to maybe change your morals, eh, it ain't it for me, dog. I'd like Jerry said, nah, it ain't worth it. Yeah, there's other shit going on too, man. A lot of other shit. All right, so this other one was our conspiracy theory last week on the after, after her. her show and i do want to throw it out there uh caleb did say he'd follow up with this story i did he did we <laughs> followed up actually and it came out the next day <laughs> the after earth came out and then she made this announcement or some shit so like, we'll, yeah. let, we'll let caleb speak <laughs> on it let caleb speak on it so we released the after earth on friday um this revelation happened on friday also talking about kate middleton and where she's been we we cited an, an affair possibly uh a, a love child out of wedlock but Friday, when we were on the plane going to Vegas, uh, a video came out where Kate Middleton announced she had uh, cancer and was in cancer treatment from a surgery in January. Tough, uh, t- <laughs> t- asshole. T- asshole. asshole. You know what, though? Everything we talked about on the last day after her, if you guys go back, cancer was never mentioned. Only like, only the secret love child, the affair, and potentially plastic surgery was mentioned. No mention of cancer was ever involved, and it just so happened to come out on Friday. Maybe the London press, BBC, got a hold of our podcast and were like, oh, we got to make an announcement to prove these guys are wrong. Or maybe they were like, hey, the heads up, this is something that, you know, maybe respect this. Like, for whatever reason, and thank God there's some hope for humanity, most people still respect, like, cancer and, like, people struggling. No one, no one fucks with the cancer patient. I got a real question for you, Kale. Are you doubling down on this? Um, I am going to double down on this. Um, they said the surgery was a non-cancerous surgery in her abdomen. And then it turned out after the surgery, they found out she had cancer. There's two other royals in the family. that I feel all- like that happens, though, sometimes. There, there's two other royals in the family that all- have also come out with uh, cancer, cancerous diseases in the last uh, two years or so. So maybe it runs in the family. Uh, they did say she is on... Maverse. It's so much. She married into the family. She did. Yeah. Well, so like, it wouldn't be in her family genes. There are, you know, other royal members. So who knows? They all sleep around. They, they. I, you ever I hear? Mean, didn't the royal family start off as a little like incestuous? Yeah. There's a. Thing, well, no. There's a hundred percent facts. There, there's that. a thing called the jaw. I forgot what kind of jaw it's called, but a lot of these royals, they all have the same jaw line. It's because of intermarriage. Is that that Matt Rife jaw? No, that's uh. <laughs> apparently, he's on some chewing thing that strengthens your jaw. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah jo- that's, jaws called rhino, that's called rhinoplasty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gino, uh, jaws are size. So uh, Jerry mentioned doubling down. So a lot of the sources that I was looking at were saying that this video was an AI generated video and it wasn't real. So I was I was looking at some sources and they're saying. These just, days, man, who knows? Just like Caleb, that doctor. Caleb photo. leaves Vegas. All of a sudden, he wants to double down. <laughs> Caleb, Just like that photo that was Caleb. photoshopped. And actually, even Kate Middleton admitted that photo was photoshopped. She's like, I experiment with Photoshop. I'm just a, like a, I'm a beginning photographer getting into it. So she's like, yes, it was. So she admitted that. But a lot of people are saying that video where she came out was AI generated. Huh. Just on some certain like weird sites that I look at. So are you a member to QAnon? <laughs> no, I, I don't even know if there's membership. Like, I don't know how you get in. No one. I didn't swear an oath or no one like got me into it. But, like, I might follow other sources close to what they do. QAnon, look at. Caleb. <laughs> I should have brought up the hat for this one. Huh? <laughs> to, like, I issue an apology see... or something? Uh, t- no. <laughs> Never apologize. You just take the hat off, is what happens when you apologize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're wrong. Hold it over my heart. I'm sorry. I was wrong here. <laughs> Conspiracy busted. <laughs> I mean, that's a good follow up. That's a fast follow up. I didn't think we'd have an answer, like, the day of the. In, in for... seven days, these guys are going to get their answer, Caleb. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they, we got our answer right away. We were like, <laughs> not good, man, not good." I saw that, and I was like, <sighs> "A couple people commented on it, and they're like, oh, Jesus, diabolical.'" <laughs> <laughs> I sat next to Jerry on the plane. I saw the story. I was like, "Oh no, oh no!" <laughs> I just looked at him. And I was like, uh, "You know, the dude in Happy Gilmore." He's like, "No, I'm gonna play for it." Like, like when Chubbs dies, he's just outside. He goes, <laughs> he just shakes his head at him. Uh. That's how I felt sitting next to Caleb when he showed me that story. Yeah, that's how I felt internally. But then I saw like, oh, maybe is this a uh, AI generated thing? Who knows? Maybe, maybe it is. I don't know. Well, uh, they have all right, there's what, photos of her going around though. So all I can imagine is K- Caleb having that worst flight to Chicago. How he's stuck in the middle between me and Jerry seeing this, and he's like, "Oh fuck, I made fun of a cancer patient." 
Well, it's not good. I wasn't really making fun of her. I was definitely saying like, yeah, an affair seems possible or like a botched plastic surgery seems possible. So I wasn't like making fun, but I think I was digging in at the wrong reasons or I didn't consider cancer a, a possible uh, situation. So are you doubling down or are you not doubling down? In, in good spirits of a good conspiracy, I'm going to go with maybe that was an AI video. But if she does have cancer, I'm very sorry, Kate Middleton. Can't, I don't wish that on anyone. Maybe my worst enemies, but not you. Really? Even on your worst enemies, you would wish that? Well, if someone really dogged Why not just like herpes or something? It's like enough to annoy you and like destroy you. All right. But I'm, like, you, not, you don't want life. them to die. Yeah, like, but you, they don't have to die. Here's one. On my worst enemies, I wish you uh, a limp dick forever so you can never pleasure a woman. Oh my God, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? And, yeah, I guess you can only use your tongue or fingers. That would that would be what I wish on my worst enemies. All right, like his dick game is so weak, <laughs> but that finger game is strong. <laughs> you could be the condol- condolingus king, but you can never throw it down, baby. <laughs> and it's, did you just say Pause. condolingus? Yeah, condolingus king. Condolingus. I thought, uh, whatever, same thing. You catch my drift. Tomato, tomato. That's all. You just like Sorry. fused Condole- <laughs> He fused Condoleezza Rice's name with Condolingus. Condolingus. Conda. Condolingus Rice. <laughs> it's. I wonder if she ever got that growing up. A hundred percent. People are fucking horrible. I was able to think of that on the fly. I didn't even give that no thought. Uh, I didn't either. First of all, I didn't. I didn't know. Well, the first time I. The only reason I make that association is because uh, there's like a Chappelle show skit where like he makes that joke. Okay. Like it was uh the black white supremacist. He like calls he calls her Condolingus Rice. Colin they, they, Powell. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Powell. <laughs> All right, we're going to change things a bit. We're going to go into the baseball world. Uh, well, we, got- we talked about we talked about PCA. We talked yeah. about the show. Now let's talk about Showtime. Showtime. Sho- Shohei Otani and his gambling scandal. Uh it just so happens that two of the greatest baseball players almost of all time, Shohei and uh, Pete Rose, happen to be degenerate gamblers, as we have in a little picture. But, um, yeah, uh, there's a scandal going on with him and his interpreter, I.P. Mizahara. My bad if I'm pr- pronouncing your name, dog, but uh, we are on the same level of degeneracy, except for I don't have <laughs> millions like you do. Um, and but, you don't play a professional sport, and it's legal for you to do it. That that too. It is legal for me to gamble. And your job doesn't care if you do it, yeah. like the MLB. Exactly. A lot of these uh, sports, they get all uptight when you bet on sports that you're playing. I know, man. Can you imagine yeah. being like Calvin Ridley, just like gambling a little bit? Uh, over under and On yourself and your own games. No, <laughs> Calvin Ridley didn't even bet on football. Calvin Ridley. The... Who was the one in the league that was betting on himself? Uh... The guy from LSU. He was a college player betting yeah. on himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. K- Kayshawn Bowdy or that something. That just came out. But that no, was over the summer, I think. Calvin Ridley's was bullshit because he's like at the gym. The rule is no betting inside the NFL facilities. Oh, yeah. If you're a player or team personnel. And this dude was betting on like NBA games. In the locker room, which yes. was the problem. Like, that's bullshit. If you're not, if you're betting on a sport you have zero control over or any of the outcomes, that's fine guy bets on nfl then we have a problem just i don't know i thought that was kind of a dumb rule these dudes can't even have like fantasy football teams yeah they it's fucking bullshit the nfl that's, does that's get, fucking stupid the nfl does get mad about their inner inner office like fantasy teams yeah that's true which makes no sense it's, it's like it's not real betting you're just playing yeah. for points i can understand them not wanting them to bet on the nfl period because they have an inside knowledge like if their buddy from college is playing with an injury that nobody knows about eh, maybe i bet is under this week yeah that's fucked up you have insider knowledge that no one else does yeah fine you want to say no nfl to, to us it's a lower body injury right to but if he's betting on basketball, why the fuck do they care? Hockey, I think, is the most secretive of all sports when they have injuries. Yeah, the injury report. Lower body, upper yeah. body. That's and all they say. And they the, never say what it is. Unless it's a season ender, then it's a tear. They never say what it is, though. And it always comes out last minute. You never know when a guy's in or, or out of a game. Or in, a playoff, in the playoffs, at the end of the Stanley yeah. Cup run, the Stanley Cup, they put out their injury fucking list at the end. They're like, yeah, this guy had two broken ribs. This guy had a broken foot. This guy's hand was broken. This guy's fucking, you're just like, what the fuck? 
These yeah. dudes are fucking nuts, man. <clears throat> That's why I respect the sport that I played the most in my life. Yeah. Hockey. Them guys are absolute warriors. They don't fucking take flops. I mean, maybe they take dives to drop penalties, but it's two minutes to right back out. These dudes lose fucking teeth. These dudes get fucking 14, 15 stitches. I remember when Taylor Hall fell in warm-ups, got like fucking 100 stitches in his eye or some shit, came right back out, never even missed a fucking shift. It's fucking crazy, dude. Yeah, hockey's a man sport right there. I'll admit that. Like, not like... I like and the, they're not I even like, like giant athletes. Like, you see these guys. They're like your size, dude. Yeah, like, they're, man. yeah they're not... Okay. They're, Caleb could be an all star in the NHL. Yeah, you'd well, be like well, Phil Kessel. If I was, oh, sorry, if I was athletic. You're in better shape than Phil Kessel. No, I would be like, who was that little guy that the Sabres had? That Ger- Gerby. Be, Ger- yeah, I'd be like Gerby. Who, Nathan Gerby, yeah. who would was, like fight the biggest player in the league. And he would check the biggest guy too and, like, and check him in the board. And also was like a playoff MVP in college. Right? <laughs> Hobie Baker or whatever. Is that I don't cool? know if he did. He win a Hobie Baker? If he did, that'd be pretty impressive. I'm I can pretty think sure of, he did. He might have. So this whole Otani thing, his interpreter. Uh, this Mizerna guy uh, lost about four point five million dollars, and then he was like accused of it was stolen. Otani said, or reps for Otani said it was stolen, and then it was like, oh, Otani paid this money back from the debt that this guy had. Not saying that like he lost the gambling, but oh, this guy just lost four point five million dollars, and the money came from Otani's account. To his account to cover the loss. I mean, we're talking about a very young career here in the uh, MLB. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this something that's going to potentially, in a Pete Rose kind of way, hinder his ability to make the Hall of Fame? I'm going to be completely go honest with, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think anything that one. He's not an American-born player, so he has the like I didn't understand card. <laughs> it, it, listen. But it's also that's the direction you're taking us in. No speak of Eng- <laughs> no speak of English. That's <laughs> the direction, Caleb. Well, didn't Juan? I think like wasn't it Juan Encarnacion? He got, or no? It was uh, who was that guy from the Do- There's another guy from the Dodgers who was throwing out bets, and he got Encarnacion. I think it was him or some other guy. He was like a very speedy guy, not known for a high batting average, but mainly for stealing a lot of bases and hits. He got in trouble for betting too a couple of years back. Yeah, he's probably betting on himself how many stolen bases in this game. Yeah, uh, should he, I steal or not? He got in trouble for something like that. But uh, so like the money was missing in and out. It was covered for, on Otani's side for the guy. But then there was this like unofficial bookie in California. His house was also raided in all this because he was taking books offline, not through sites, not through um, you know MGM, DraftKings, FanDuel. So he was like. Is this guy connected to all this? Because he had this Mizernas guy in his phone. They had the same contact. So was Otani telling his interpreter to put bets through? Or is this guy doing it on his own? But if he did it on his own, how do you have access to $4.5 million? That's a lot of money for an interpreter. I'm sure he's making good money, but not millions. Uh, I vaguely have heard about this part of the story here. Like from the guy was robbing him to that was actually Otani's boy that he's like, Hey, I'm gonna cover your debts. Like, no one understands what the fuck is actually happening. Right, that's what's yeah. fucked up. The story is just so twisted. <clears throat> and then every day something changes in the story, so like no one knows. Now he's back in the lineup, and it's like, oh, Shohei's back. So like, okay, let's just enjoy his presence because <laughs> he's literally the face of the MLB right now, and the guy is worth like a billion dollars. The dude just signed like one of the most fucked up bullshit contracts in MLB million. history. Like. The, yeah, but it's bullshit because th- don't they only have to pay him like a million dollars? They pay him two million a year so he doesn't have to pay taxes while he's in America and he'll collect the rest when he retires and he's back in it's Japan. It's fucking bullshit. So he doesn't have to pay taxes on the rest. How, why did nobody think of this? Uh, that's like that Bonnie Bodilla from uh, the Mets who gets, he still gets paid day, every yeah. year. Yeah. Or like Ken Griffey is still one of the highest paid athletes in the MLB right. because he's he gets paid out long term, which is very smart if you think about it. Like, yeah, I don't need the money up front, but just like prolong my lifestyle. Going back on this, does Pete Rose deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? Yes. Yeah, a hundred percent, dude. He, him, He's just a degenerate. Him and Ichiro Suzuki are the only people to have three thousand hits, I believe, after the age of twenty-seven. Okay, I was gonna say because yeah. I know Jeter hit that. Well, no, I'm saying they hit three thousand alone after they turned twenty-seven. Yeah. So they already had I years in the you league. Mean before? No, after. Because oh. the older you get, you. You tend to wear down and play less. These guys, got, like Ichiro, came to the league <laughs> after ten years in Who Japan. Who else had a crazy one? Uh, uh, Pujols. He just broke a record, didn't he? Like some kind of like he joined some like uh, elitist club El- in he, the MLB. I think maybe he broke seven hundred home runs, something like that. But he always had a little. Is he on? Is he on the juice? Is he not? That that was his A-Rod? thing. Well, it depends yeah. what season. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> some he was, some he wasn't, yeah. and uh, I think that reflected in his stats <laughs> and his size. From Seattle 
to Texas. Yeah, that guy was balking a little bit. Balking Do you think bit. they'll put a rod in the hall? No, no, no. And I think he's come to terms with that. I, I mean, it is what it is. People love this, him more now as an announcer. I like yeah. him more as an announcer. Yeah. Like him and I, I like to watch him and David Ortiz go at it on the yeah. panel, and it's I just like that, they have their little side bets. Yeah, and the it's best. just like. You know, even though that uh, Boston Red Sox New York Yankees rivalry isn't as strong as it was, because obviously both teams, like one team, just straight up sucks in the Red Sox. Now, I, as a Red Sox fan, I say that it sucks. Um, and then you have teams like the Yankees, who uh, the only thing that really matters is uh, you know judges chasing history. But then in the playoffs, he gets one hit and they get a first round exit like they always do. Lately, yeah, sucks. I mean, um, dude, you're only four years away, five years away from 20 years without a World Series. I know, How can right? we still talk about this great fucking team that they have? It gets frustrating. I wish a lot of things went differently uh, two or three years ago. Maybe maybe got rid then of Then you judge. got teams like Baltimore that are just, like, amazing. Again, a first-round exit, but, like, how young is that team? But they that's, again, young kids. however, though, however, that's another one of those teams... They're good for like two years, and then they all leave for big money yeah. contracts, and then that's the end. They got to restart. So like their window is significantly less than teams like the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Dodgers. <laughs> like you know, you look at these teams; they're they're signing guys. They're like, hey man, you want to be a Dodger? We'll pay you two million a year. Like most guys are going to be like, yeah, no, fuck you. I'm like the best player in the league. I'm definitely not doing that. Well, it gets it gets crazy too because with this Mazerna guy, like he also like forged this whole like uh, resume and his background story. Said he went, he said he went to UC Berkeley. There's no record of him there. Said he worked with the Red Sox before. There's no record of there. So it's like, is this guy like some sort of shady figure or like how did him and Otani like <laughs> link up? Like so he's got a whole new interpreter now. Uh, it's Hollywood, baby. He is, he's in Hollywood. He's been uh do yeah that's right all the spin factor. He's yeah. in L A. Yeah. They got to spin it. Um. So he's got a whole new spin factory around him. What's going to happen? Investigation is ongoing too. So we will definitely be following up with this. We got you know a whole baseball season ahead of us. Yeah, I'm curious how this plays out. That being said, dude, uh, obviously this is a little long. Uh, I wanted to get into this little cigar review. Uh, Caleb, did you end up doing yours? Gio, did you get any yours? I literally just finished mine. Okay, so we'll let you start. I did one obviously on our. Uh, I did a mini review of this cigar already. Uh, I'm going to stick with that. Because uh, I had a very similar uh, review. Wow, that's good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the cigar is fucking amazing. There's okay. there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The cigar is amazing. All right. So I'll start it off, Caleb. I'll give you some time here. Appearance, I gave this thing a nine. The box is really nice. It's a very, like, that, like, black high gloss finish. Each actual individual uh, slot has its own little ribbon to pop it out. Because sometimes it's fucking annoying. Uh, I mean, not a... Nothing bad to say in that regard. Double band, you know, EP made it real clean with that, uh, like, larger black band to symbolize that. And then, you know, the pledge band in black. Or, I'm sorry, encore band in black. I'm mixing them up there. But that was my uh, little tongue tie for the day. So that's where my nine comes into play. I think if there was just, like, one more bit of differentiator, like, you know, for it, like, I wish they like would have said black on this secondary band. I just feel like it would have like looked a little bit better, like gold lettering vertically. I think that would have probably put that into a nine point five on the cigar overall. Uh, burn. I gave this thing a nine. I did take into account because I learned my lesson after uh, Eric brought up a very strong point about Connecticut Broadleaf burning a little bit heart longer to, or more. Uh, Connecticut Broadleafs basically get a little curve for me going forward because they're thicker. So that is it there. But I think I touched this up once throughout the entire show. And that was because I was giving my spiel about the actual cigar in our opening. Uh, so that burn was a nine for me. Uh, construction. This is where I think the cigar is extremely well made. So construction, I gave this thing a 9.5. This cigar came in on Sunday while we were out of town. I picked it up. And it's been sitting in, you know, my humidor for since Monday nightish, or probably Tuesday morning. And you would not be able to tell the difference. No dryness, held up well, no ash is falling. I think I got like one flake and that I can notice just because I'm wearing a black shirt. Uh, fantastically made product from EPC. Draw, I went with the punch. 
perfect smoke output, you know, no issues there. Uh, the only reason it's a little bit lower is just for whatever reason, that punch was a little bit more difficult. And I think that had more to do with just it didn't get to sit a little bit longer in the humidor to reabsorb some moisture. Uh, enjoyment. I gave this thing a nine. I really enjoyed this cigar. I like the flavors. It uh, Smoking the Encore before... You know, very mild, elegant cigar that you have that, like, creamy look to it. This just gave that little extra nicotine punch that made me just relax and want to enjoy, you know, and do this show. So that brought my overall score to a 46, giving me a 92. Yeah, man. Yes. Or I'm sorry, 45.5, giving me a 92. 45.5 is a 91. 91. 91. All right, there we go. Yes. yes. Math is not my strong All right. I'll go. I'm ready. Uh, Encore Black. Uh, appearance, I'm factoring the bands and the box as well. I'm giving it a nine and a half. Very sexy, elegant looking cigar. Uh, burn. Uh, one one light, didn't touch it up at all. And even though it was like that broadleaf, this thing burned evenly throughout the whole cigar. So I'm going to give it a nine and a half. Uh, no issues. Uh, barely flaked on me at all. Uh, construction, had a great stack of dimes here. When it did fall on my laptop, that was user error. I hit the mic and it fell off. Uh, nine and a half. Things a tank, man. Uh, draw, I went with the straight cut. And it was actually a very nice straight cut. When I cut it, pure and clean. Uh, gave it a nine. No issues on the draw. This is a very smoky stick, by the way, too. Uh, big big puffs of smoke. Uh, fat clouds. And enjoyment, uh, PCA recap episode. Gave it a nine as well. My overall score was a 93. Um, my additional notes here. So on the cold draw, I had some dark chocolate and leather. Uh, kind of stayed throughout the whole cigar. Uh, and I got uh, some light pepper. And as I get into the final third, a little bit more peppery. But it's it's not like full-on blast, blasty in the face with pepper. Uh, but I, I would consider this more of a full-body smoke. Uh, it's definitely not on the lighter side for you guys out there. I can like quickly retouch on like our uh, like my private mini review that I did on this uh, appearance. I gave it a nine point five. Really like the box, the burn. I gave it a nine. Construction a nine. When I smoked it the first time, I had some ash issues. Uh, they it was kind of light and flaky. Uh, I didn't really have that issue this time, so that's really nice. But I'm gonna stick with it. Uh, draw. I gave it a nine point five. Caleb touched on the clouds of smoke you get off this thing. Very smoky cigar. Really, really good smoke output and the overall enjoyment. This fucking thing is awesome, man. 9.5, bringing me to a 46.5, 93 overall. Absolute chocolate bomb with light hints of pepper and leather notes. Really like this cigar. Uh, if you do have the opportunity to find those first like 2,000 boxes that I think are floating around right now, uh, total production I think is five. Geo touched on the thing being staggered around over the next year. Maybe like a little one-off every year. I'm not really sure what they're going to do or what their plans are, but they changed it up, put a little more... Uh, you know, full body experience out of this once cigar of the year. Uh, and I think that this, the thing is, uh, I mean, it's definitely a cigar that you guys got to go get and smoke. And that was the same score you gave your previous review, 93, right? Correct. All right. So you got two 93s and 91, 92.33 overall, which is a 92 overall score from the three of us. I don't know why I appreciate that so much always. Because it just makes sense. It's just us. Mm -hmm. Dude, guys, go out. If you got, if you're lucky enough, like the guy said, to find this out there, whether you get a single or a box, even a five pack, go ahead, enjoy the experience. That being said, obviously this is like a special after her. If this isn't going to even be a numbered episode, this is just something I'm sure we wanted to do for everybody. You Patreon members have just been getting absolutely hammered with content. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying that. Let us know if you're enjoying that because uh, we worked our fucking tails off this whole fucking weekend. I know you guys thought we were just out and about in fucking Vegas partying our asses off. I mean, we did a little of both. We partied our asses off while we worked, and we worked through those hangovers to make sure that you guys <laughs> on the Patreon were getting yeah. quality content, great interviews, and you know some shit that you can enjoy. So we appreciate you guys. But yeah, the other guys that are listening to this after her, uh, again, I'm going to touch back on this. Go check out the Patreon, man. It's fucking $6. Give it yeah. a whirl. If you don't like it, I don't know. Cancel it. I, I don't fucking know. But if you do like it, there's a lot of fucking cur cool perks. There's a lot of things that we do on there that we don't do on the main show. And again, there's other tiers. If you guys are in for more of it, uh, like if you're into a more personal experience with us, you know, we we offer tiers like that too. So the mega herf. The mega herf. The mega herf for 12 bucks. You double up. Uh, you get access to some of our biannual giveaways. Not saying that we do 
more than that, but you get access and you get access to our monthly herfs that we do. I think I could speak on this from our Patreon members' perspectives. Uh, if you've done any of the mega herfs, it's absolutely worth it. Yeah. And we, we do have guests on, and you know we can't promise the guests every time, but there will be more guests on as well. That being said, any closing notes to the episode? This is kind of like a down-to, after-herf kind of show. Yeah. I miss that. We haven't done that in a while. But guys, just make sure, as always, you're following Facebook, the Instagram, we have the TikTok, and most importantly, the YouTube. Got to get those subscribers up. We're a growing gang. Grower gang. We appreciate all the new subscribers. Uh, just keep those likes and comments up. Uh, let us know what else you want us to smoke and what other brands you want us to smoke and who else you want us to interview. Let us know. We always follow through and we listen to our viewers. Perfect. That being said, Gio, anything you want to close with? No, I think Caleb touched on it. Guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to the Patreon. Yeah. And audio only. Make sure you find us on the Cigar Hustlers Podcast Network on Podbean. The number one cigar network on Podbean. Uh, one little quick thing. Uh, rest in peace to that officer in New York, man. Absolutely. Uh, if you guys aren't following the story, really sad. I, I didn't want to circle back and end on a sad note, yeah. but um, and the just people. know that shit like this is happening out there, and it's it's this isn't the only guy. Yeah, you know, and the people in Baltimore as well, for sure. But you know, obviously the law enforcement side that, yeah. that really hits because you know that our law enforcement are out there doing their absolute due diligence and serving their communities, looking for these people and responding to these kind of events. It's it's fucked up, man. It's really fucked up. But on a lighter note, we love you guys. Uh, and we'll see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, this will be out. Uh, I mean, it could be out tomorrow. It could be out on Friday. I'm not sure. But uh, if not, make sure you guys are checking out that uh, episode we just did with Eric Espinosa. That was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next Wednesday with another special guest coming on the show. Just so you know, it's already done. So, pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Sayonara. Peace. Peace.